In the heart of Delhi stands a 1,600-year-old iron post that defies time and engineering expectations. Welcome to the Iron Pillar of Delhi, a marvel of ancient metallurgy that continues to captivate the world. Many believe that Chandragupta II, who ruled during the 4th century CE, had a hand in its creation and installation at its current location as a symbol of his triumph over rivals. This powerful king from history has sparked much interest among researchers due to his involvement in constructing engineering marvels like standalone columns without any support. Chandragupta II was a prominent ruler of the Gupta Empire, which reigned between 320 and 550 CE, a period when India saw great advancements in science, arts, literature, and philosophy. Initially, the Iron Pillar was erected as a symbol of gratitude to the Hindu god Vishnu. It may also have been intended as a commemoration of Chandragupta II's victories in battle over his enemies. Inscriptions on the pillar refer to a king named Chandra, believed by scholars to be Chandragupta a second himself. While there is still debate over its original placement after being dismantled, most agree that it stood at Udayagiri, an area in present-day Madhya Pradesh, with significant religious and political importance during the Gupta's reign. The pillar may have stood at the entrance to one of these sacred places, as Udayagiri features numerous rock-cut caves and temples where such items were typically found. At some point around the 10th or 11th century AD, it was moved to Delhi, where it stands today. The reason for this relocation remains uncertain, with theories suggesting that it was brought by some Tamar kings or by early rulers of the Delhi Sultanate. However, one thing is clear, even after more than a thousand years, the Iron Pillar continues to serve as a symbol of India's illustrious past. The age and material composition of the Iron Pillar of Delhi make it exceptional. It is an engineering marvel considering that, at that time, there were no advanced methods of metallurgy, and it was made with almost 100% pure wrought iron. It completely baffles one's mind that how a civilization with no advanced technology has created such a marvel of architecture. The pillar stands at a height of 7.2 meters, 23 feet, and weighs more than 6 tons, consisting of 99.72% iron. Despite its location in Delhi, where the climate is very humid for certain months of the year, the pillar has remarkably experienced little rust over its 1600-year history. This corrosion resistance has captured the attention of scholars and metallurgists, leading to extensive studies of its content and manufacturing processes. The reason why rust cannot destroy the pillar lies in the type of iron used in its construction. The iron used had high levels of phosphorus and minimal sulfur or magnesium, resulting in the formation of a protective iron oxide layer called misawite that covers the surface of the pillar. This thin film acts as a shield against rusting, preventing moisture and oxygen from reaching the underlying metal. Additionally, forge welding was employed during the manufacturing process where individual iron chunks were hammered together at high temperatures using ancient technology. This method allowed for the creation of such a massive structure without the modern machinery available today. Research indicates that impurities were carefully controlled during smelting, allowing for the creation of this non-corrosive property in the pillar, indicating a sophisticated understanding of metallurgy compared to others during that era, as most iron objects rusted then. The inscription and its meaning. On this column, there is a Sanskrit inscription written in ancient Brahmi script, which is although now difficult to read, but this inscription sheds some light on why this pillar was put up and what should be remembered about it. The text honors a king called Chandra, believed to be Chandragupta Seku in many cases. He was also described as a devoted worshiper towards Vishnu, who had won over his enemies in battles. It is implied in the text that the pillar was raised in homage to Vishnu, who is known as the preserver of the universe in Hindu mythology. The emperor Chandragupta II is identified with Vishnu too, and it is said that he has done so many heroic things just like the god did. Political dominance combined with religious commitment formed part of the inscriptions made by these kings to explain and justify their leadership. In addition, 
There is evidence in the inscription showing that this pillar had been initially placed elsewhere, but later brought to Delhi most probably from Udayagiri. Although no specific information about how the pillar was built is given in the text, some references are made to its construction with regard to religious and political symbolism. Myths and Legends Throughout its existence over many centuries, the Iron Pillar has given rise to numerous stories. A particular legend relates to King Anangpal Tomar, an 11th century sovereign of Delhi. It was believed that by taking down the Iron Pillar, King Anangpal would be able to reinforce his reign, hence creating peace within his kingdom again. As per the myth, when he did so and pulled out the pillar from ground level, there was some blood at the base smeared by Vasuki, who was a great snake king supporting the earth according to Hindu mythology. The reason for him to act this way was that he thought that removing it changed how things were placed around his kingdom but still left one problem unsolved. Until put back again properly, nothing could make amends or restore order there. Even though most likely untrue, such tales added an aura and importance around these structures, thereby captivating people's attention on them. Another story goes that any person capable of surrounding the pillar with his arms while standing back against it would have all his desires fulfilled. Over time, touching and hugging the pole so frequently following this belief wore out its outer surface, prompting those in charge to enclose the area around the pole with a fence for better protection from damages caused by continued touching and embracing it. Another popular legend links the pillar to the Pandavas from the Indian epic Mahabharata. It is believed that the pillar is a symbol to the strength and might of Bhim, one of the five Pandava brothers known for his might and valor. The Pillar Today and its legacy. Today, thousands of tourists visiting India cannot leave without seeing the Iron Pillar, which is located at the Kutub Minar complex, a UNESCO World Heritage. Every year, many tourists, as well as historians, visit this ancient wonder for an insight into its historical facts and scientific aspects alike. The Iron Pillar is a testimony to India's scientific and technological knowledge. This pillar is not affected by rust like other metals. For this reason, scientists are studying it all over the world. Some even think that this is proof that people in the past knew about how to protect iron from rust in a better way than we do today, from which they could develop high-tech solutions for corrosion prevention. The fact that the pillar has managed to survive for so many centuries under threat from natural elements, as well as political turmoil and military invasion, confirms its exceptional design and the talent of those who were involved in its construction. The Iron Pillar is more than just a reminder of India's rich cultural heritage, it is a testimony to its scientific progress and contribution towards global knowledge, particularly knowledge that reminds us of an era when India was at the forefront educationally and technologically. Today, in front of the Iron Pillar, we see not only the grandeur of empires gone by, but also witness how humanity has always moved forward through innovation. Just like our unending desire for knowledge and insight into things, which also progresses with time, the fact that this pillar has been able to withstand different weather conditions is similar to ours. The Iron Pillar at Delhi stands high as a relic signifying engineering adroitness, with captivating allure for everyone. It makes us think about how smart our predecessors were and what kind of enigmas are still waiting for solutions. It links past wisdom with the present science, posing the question of whether one should ever stop learning. Since even now, we can see that there is much to be learnt from ancient civilization. We bring quality content and information to our viewers with a lot of hard work. Do like, share, and subscribe to our channel so you do not miss any updates.